Man, I have to take you back to the 90s when I first met the man that's on the line right now. And since then, he has partnered up with Marshall Mathers and created one of the most successful movements that hip hop has ever seen. Uh, the, the latest release, Music to Be Murdered By, have broke, broken so many records and continue to still stream well. Man, that doesn't happen alone. You can't just be an artist and expect to blow up like that. You need a team around you. You need an advisor mm -hmm. around you. You need people who have equal vision that walk on equal footing around you. Right, Heather B? You need a, You got to be surrounded by people who think like you. And the one person that has always been around Eminem that I've always seen is the one and only Paul Rosenberg, and he's with us today, the captain <laughs> of Shade 4 or 5. Paul, 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 Paul. Hey! That's an incredible intro. I felt like you were talking about somebody else. I was like, who is this great person he's talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's amazing. I got to meet him. <laughs> you got to meet him, right? Man, look in the mirror, yeah. Paul. I'm talking about you. People, hey, man, we got to get, hey, bro, we got to get roses now, man. I, I got to tell you oh, these man, things. Tell me about it. Tell While me about it. man. Shock G, man. I was, I was so hurt last night when I heard about that, man. I, oh, God. Yeah, I've been man. a fan of that guy since I was a kid. I, I, and it just keeps happening, man. The hit, hits keep coming, and I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's scary. I mean, we're getting older, and I guess this is what happens. But, damn, he, he was young, and, and some of these, these guys that are passing are young, and it's, just, it's difficult to accept. But you're right. We, we have to, uh, you know, give people their roses now, acknowledge them now, thank them now, show them love now, you know, yeah. talk about them while they're still here. Why they're still here, man. I'm glad you're on the show, too. Um, it, just, man, can you share any story? Did M ever perform um, on tour with, with Digital Underground? Did you ever have a chance to meet on stage? I don't think so. No, I, I don't think so. I, I, I feel like their sort of moment was, was significantly before when we came in the game. You yeah. know, like Marshall got his deal in 98. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, you know, by then... You know, Pac was already gone. Um, it was, it was sort of past their sort of uh, groundswell. Um, mm -hmm. But no, I don't. I don't think. I don't think he had a chance to to do anything with those guys. Mm. But I know he was a fan. Definitely was a fan. Of course, of course. Paul Rosenberg is here, and um, you know, I, I'm I'm pretty fascinated by the longevity. Eminem signed his deal in 1998. My gosh. Yeah. Think about oh. that. <laughs> wow. Hey, Tracy, that ain't to say he started in 98. But no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. No, in, Infinite came out in uh, 96. That's his, uh -huh. his first independent record. So, yeah, this has been a, this has been a minute. Independent from an independent record to now, it's, it's interesting how much has changed. When y'all put that out, and I know we're going to talk about what we came to talk about today, but when you put out Infinite, what was the goal? Like, what was your vision? Well, you... I, I wasn't in, involved yet, actually. Uh -huh. um, he, he had done that on his own, and I bought Infinite from him on cassette for six bucks. He was selling them hand to hand at the hip hop shop on Seven Mile. And it, it took me by surprise in the sense that I, I was surprised he had it together so much to be able to put out an independent product. You know, back then, that wasn't easy to do. Like, you had to really have your stuff together, right? You had to be able to afford a studio. You had to hire producers. You, you couldn't just record everything at home and press a button on your computer. You had to send it off to be manufactured and get the cassettes back. And, you know, it was very different back then. So I was impressed by the fact that, he had it together and, and had a group of people that, that knew enough to be able to put this product into his hand. Um, and then I heard it and I thought it was great, but you know, if you've heard infinite and I, I know you have sway, but maybe some of the audience hasn't, um, it's very different than the M&M that you're used to now and in, in, in almost every regard, right? The way, the way he sounded, his delivery, what he, uh, the subject matter, the types of beats, it was all very different than the Eminem that you know today. But the one thing that I, I heard was the talent, right? So I knew that he had this sort of raw ability um, to rap it really, really well. So I stayed focused on him and stayed in touch with him after I left Detroit and I moved to New York to take the bar exam. And then um, some friends reached out to me. It was actually DJ Head, um, who was Marshall's DJ at one time. 
reached out to me and said, hey, you got to check out the new stuff Eminem's doing. And so that's when he had um, the bare bones of what became the Slim Shady EP. So it had like Just Don't Give a Fuck on there uh-huh. um, and records like that. And then that, that's when he found his voice and created Slim Shady and that attitude that really is his attitude and gave him this sort of freedom to be who he really is as an artist. And that's when I was like, okay, this is, this is something I'm definitely going to want to work with. Mm. Hmm. Paul Rosenberg. Come on, man. I love that. Wow. Took, took us back, Tracy. Yes, indeed. And Paul. Yeah. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Heather. What, what it do? So good to hear your voice, Paul. I'm glad that you're doing well. You know, you just broke down a bit of what, Eminem was doing, of course, but behind the scenes, can you talk about all the zigzaggy roles a manager has to play? Because it's not just dealing with a label and eventually creating a label. There's so many different things, especially when you have decades of longevity. Can you just share? Yeah, I mean, the way I describe it is the manager should be the sort of business interface for all things that an artist does. Right. So if you split an artist in two and there's the business side and the the art side, um, the manager should handle the bulk of the business side. And different managers have different types of relationships, of course, with their artists and different artists are more engaged in business than others. You know, Marshall's very different than like Jay-Z, who's very engaged and very um, entrepreneurial. Marshall's more much more focused on the art. So um, if you've got a good relationship with the artist and they trust you and they give you the ball, Um, you got to run with it and be the business interface for, for that, um, for that actor, that artist. So everything that that artist does from, like you said, the record label to the attorneys, to the business manager, to marketing, to publicity, to touring, you name it, all of those things, endorsements, sponsorships, we handle, we speak to all of those different facilities and all of those different companies and all of those different agencies on behalf of the artist, always representing the artist's best interest, looking out for the artist, always checking in with the artist and, you know, deciding in tandem with them what the best step to take and the best decisions are to make, but being that voice for the artist, protecting their best interests and advancing their career. And that's what we do. Mm -hmm. I've often heard questions of um, people asking how, do I get a manager, you know, and they think either you do some Google searches and you pitch yourself, but then I think, and I've also experienced and heard from other people, it's better when someone sees your potential and they've been studying you and they want to be your manager. And it's almost as if they're um, interviewing to become that versus the other way around. What do you think is best for someone who wants a manager? I think every situation is different. Um, You know, some people, the the one thing about management is it's one of the only uh, jobs you can have as being an artist manager that has no barrier to entry. Right. So somebody's an artist, they say, Hey, will you be my manager? You say, yeah, I'll be your manager. Then you're a manager. Right. So there's, there's no qualifications necessary tech in a technical sense, in a practical sense, you have to be very qualified. You're going to get eaten up. Right. So, me, I happen to be preparing myself for this for a very long time. I you know, went to undergrad, I went to law school, I studied the music business and um, wanted to become very involved in the music business. So I was preparing myself for it. Um, and I happened to be in the right place at the right time and, and meet the right person. And, you know, in a sense, there's a lot of luck involved there. But, you know, I, I didn't stumble upon Marshall. You know, I found him, he found me and we started working together. So each situation is different. The one thing um, I think is, is most important is trust, right? So you have to have somebody who, who you trust to be able to handle your business um, and, and represent you properly and um, do all the things that are, you know, in your honor. Um, and then beyond that, you know, obviously the person who, who's going to manage you, uh, hopefully if they don't have experience, have some sort of um, background to prepare them to uh, enter into this business realm because uh you know they're tough navig- waters to navigate at times mm-hmm. so i mean I'll hopefully that answers your question yep okay paul rosenberg is here heather you want to ask him anything like he's still giving yep. bills 
<laughs> Paul, what's good? What's good with you, Paul? Hey, Look, you got to dig deep for this question because I know that okay. you're all here and you have to always talk business and whatever. But what I want to know is what the hell do you do for fun, Paul? Are you, like, cooking on your spare time? You watching best? <laughs> what the hell do you do for fun, Paul? Well, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, I am a, a – an avid sports fan, um, so I go nice. to uh, I go to Nets games as as you know. I've seen I've seen you guys at Nets games before. Um, I'm still going. I go tonight night actually to the Nets game, so I do that for fun. Oh. Uh, I am also a very very big college basketball and football fan. Uh, go Green! Nice. I'm a Michigan State Spartan, right? So um, I I'm a fan of that. I smoke cigars and I I sort of collect cigars as a hobby. So. Oh. Oh, um, even yesterday, I was working out of a, a, a cigar shop, um, you know, and and um, just you know, I, I have a family yeah. too, so I spend a lot of time with my kids, yeah. right? So my son, well, I'm so- my son is a, a eleven. He plays basketball, so that takes up some of my oh. time. My daughter plays piano and sings and is involved in school plays. So I believe me, there's plenty to keep me busy. Can you recommend a good cigar for about twelve bucks, Paul? I'm I'm so serious right now. It's not even funny. I'm glad you said cigars. Oh wow. Um. So I have a lot of friends in the business, so I gotta I gotta handle this delicately. Um. There's a <laughs> lot of good brands. I would I would definitely go for something from. Uh, we've done a cigar with this brand, so I'll go with them. Something from Drew Estate. Uh, would Drew be Estate? always a good choice. Um, but you can also okay. go with something from Crown Heads or something from Warped or something from Tatuaje um, or something from Foundation. Those are all brands I would I would recommend. Okay, dope. Sound like all his friends, Heather. Um, oh, well, well <laughs> listen, listen, look, out, I, look out for the cookout. I reached out to those guys and became friends with them because I love their product. So there it is. It's, it's, not, it's not like I'm just plugging for them. It's like, you know, if you ask me who some of my favorite rappers are, which I'm not going to do that right now, but okay. I'll be able to tell you because you know what I listen to, right? Okay. Hey, listen. Uh, one of the things Paul Rosenberg is here, by the way, the captain of the ship. Um, one of the things I've always, you know, I got a chance to to witness the whole evolution of what you guys have done with Shady and uh, you and Eminem's Marshall Mathers uh, working relationship, brotherhood, business relationship, and it's been phenomenal. You know, there's been some times when people have really really slayed Eminem's name and dragged you guys through the mud, you know, and then you guys will come back around and keep working and keep doing what you do. And then you find out that the success is still there. It has been sustained. In fact, it's even expanded. And I think a lot of that has to do with foresight and vision, Um, being able to adjust and change with the times and evolve with the times, whether it's culturally, uh, uh, whether it's through technology or otherwise, and I recently saw this tweet that says, surprise, we are excited to announce that Eminem is dropping this Sunday, April 25th, on Nifty Gateway. This is about a Nifty, this is a Nifty Gateway tweet, and Eminem is releasing his own NFT, that's a non-fungible token, this Sunday, correct? Right. Yeah, well, it's a set of not of NFTs, but yes, that's all very accurate. Yeah. Okay, so NFT is relatively new to a lot of people, and someone has to simplify in the explanation what it is, and why do these right. things even matter? Why it is so valuable? Can you do that? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I listen. It's it's all like you said, very new, and it's it's very conceptual, um, and there's nothing physical involved in it, so. It's something that you've, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that you have to understand the concept of in order to see if you want to embrace it or not. Right. So a non-fungible token is a digital token that is attached to something called blockchain. Right. And the blockchain is a digital ledger that um, spans across the world, kind of like the internet, right. Where it's involved in servers all over the place. And once something is attached to the blockchain with a certain code, it's sort of locked in place, Mm -hmm. right? So it can't be duplicated, can't be replicated. And the difference between an NFT and cryptocurrency is an NFT means non-fungible token. And that means that if something's fungible, that means that one item is the same as the next, right? So each, every penny is 
pretty much the same as the next penny. They're all worth one cent. The pennies are pennies, right? But in NFT, one item is not the same as the other. They all have a different code, so they can't be interchanged. And when you take those things that can't be interchanged and you attach things to them like artwork or imagery or audio or video, then you have an NFT that represents whatever that piece of uh, media that you've attached to it is, right? Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the concept. And when you talk about trading and buying them, what do you, people say, well, what am I buying? What am I getting? What am I trading? You're not actually trading the asset that's attached to the NFT or buying the asset that's attached to the NFT. You're, you're buying or trading the token itself, right? So mm -hmm. if you spend um, the money to buy the token, you get it either on the platform, like Nifty Gateway has their own platform, right? And you can then, after you buy it, you can sell it, you can trade it, or you can keep it and see if it goes up in value. And these tokens are going to be attached to whatever the artist um, that is represented, in this case, Eminem, um, whatever they've decided to attach to these tokens, right? So the one thing, like, um, Sway, when, when you and I were talking about it, the one thing we discussed is, you know, when, when we came up as kids playing video games, we didn't have the same things that they do now, which are these in-app purchases, right, where people get virtual goods. So, you know, you've seen people playing Fortnite, when they play Fortnite, they buy skins, right, to be in the game to play a character. So I want to buy a skin to be Iron Man in Fortnite. And they're okay um, with the concept of paying for something that's digital within the app or within the game, and they own it just in that virtual space, uh -huh. right? So this is broader. You're paying for something, you own it in a virtual space, but throughout the entire you know, internet or metaverse, right? You own this thing and you don't have any physical control over it, but, or physical possession of it, but you have it in a sense that it's in your digital life, right? So these are collections for people in their digital life. And that's the best way that I can sort of describe it. And hopefully that makes sense. And if it doesn't, then, you know, there's, there's more ways for you to understand it. But that, that's how I try to explain it to people. Yeah, yeah, and it'll get better for Paul in the months to come as, <laughs> as he learned more and more about it. But that was pretty damn good, Paul. And, 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 and when I think about it, a couple of things come to mind because NFTs, they're going to change the game on how we view art collecting, art dealing, art buying um, with visuals, audio. It's going to be a new way of sharing it. And yeah. Um, right. How do you think? Yeah, it it, it is. And, and the one thing that that also that I that I try to explain is, you know, when when you, you buy a print of an artwork, right, an artist makes a painting and they make prints of that painting. They are not actual originals, but they're a copy of that original. And you buy the print and you hang it on your wall. This is similar to that, except it's a digital print. So whatever mm -hmm. the piece of art is, you're buying a digital print of it. You don't have physical possession, but you have digital possession of that print. And that can't be copied. It can't be replicated because it's attached to that specific sequence on the blockchain. And it's authentic and numbered and, you know, can't, can't, be, um, can't be replicated or, um, or anything like that. So there's so, that but, aspect of it as well. When I, when I think of this, I'm, I'm wondering how you think it's going to affect the need or the, the experience of more traditional mediums. Like, how do you think it's going to affect the DJ or musicians as creators as a whole? Yeah, I, listen, I think we're just sort of scratching the surface of where we are going to go with this, right? This is like um, the early days of any other sort of major technology. I don't think we really uh, know where things are going to go in this in the utilization and growth of this technology um you know when when the internet first started you know we just basically had email and, and chat rooms right i mean and look what it's turned into now i think this is the same sort of stage that we're in with this blockchain technology right now as where we were when the internet started to where the internet is now Hmm. Man, we got Paul Rosenberg. Um, Eminem is releasing his own NFTs. That's this Sunday. What time? And, and, and what time was will this take place? 
Yeah, so it starts at 6.30 p.m. Um, Eastern time, and there's, there's a few different drops, and we haven't released all the details of them yet, but there's going to be an open edition, which means that you, um, for a set period of time, I, I think it's going to be for 10 minutes, you can buy as many of this particular NFT as you want, right? So that's, that's an open edition. Then there's going to be um, an edition that is for a period of a longer period, period of time, where they're a limited quantity, right? Open edition means as many people buy that particular NFT during that time period, they will mint as many as are purchased, right? Then there's going to be limited items, which for a set period of time you can buy, but once they're gone, they're gone, right? So there's a limited amount and those can be purchased for that period of time. And then there's going to be also um, a one of one, which is going to be auctioned. Um, and, you know, sky's the limit for, for what that's going to reach, and we're going to give a portion of that particular item to uh, the Marshall Mathers Foundation as well. Um, so there's going to be a charitable um, component to this. Man. But, um, wow. you know, we, we, we worked hard to try to create something that really spoke to Marshall and, and who he is and, and his, his sort of um, persona as an artist. Because, um, you know, a lot of times people just come into this and, they hook up with an artist and they put out a piece of art and it doesn't really speak to who the person is. Like if Marshall would have put out some sort of abstract painting, people would be like, what the hell is that? Like it doesn't really connect to who he is. So we came up with this concept and the drop is called shady con. And much like um, people um, in the real world go to these conventions like comic con or, you know, Star Trek con or whatever sort of, um, whatever sort of thing people are fans of or have a hobby surrounding and they gather and sort of trade um, their wares and their collectibles. So we created a digital version of that. And this is called shady con and the inspiration for, for the actual NFTs that are available are, you know, Marshall's interest in um, what he personally collects. Right. So he's a comic book fan and dare I say comic book geek and he's been collecting comic books since he was a kid, but he also collects vintage toys um, and he um, also obviously is a producer and makes beats. So we tied all that stuff together um, for the drop, and we, we've uh, teased out part of it, and the open editions are these action figures. Um, so there, there's a, a Slim Shady, um, an M&M, and a Marshall Mathers action figure, and those are the open editions. But then um, we're also going to have, and I guess this, is, this will be an exclusive, um, one of the numbered sets, we're calling it a pack, is uh, trading cards. Right. So there's going to be a set of six trading cards that are available in a numbered limited quantity as well. Um, and then beyond the packs, we have two limited editions, which are statuettes um, that are sort of 3D art renderings. And they have an original beat produced by Marshall for this drop attached to them. And those are in a, in a limited quantity. Um, wow. And then the one of one um, is going to be a custom created video with a one one the, the beat is only attached to this nft this one of one so there's a separate beat attached to the one of one nft and uh there's going to be giveaways with that too which we'll be announcing probably later today wow so, so you gave up you the goods <laughs> yo oh. Ooh, I was thinking, man, he going to – Yeah, I was thinking you was going to be cryptic about it, Paul. Okay, you actually <laughs> gave it up today. I was like, how am I going to get this out of him? I've got to get this out of him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, listen, I mean, it's, it's happening Sunday, right? So we got to start talking about it and get people ready for it. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. It's something we're, we're trying out. We've spent the last couple months putting it together. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been a lot of work, but it's been very enlightening, and we've learned a lot, and it's been a, it's been a cool process. Wow. Paul Rosenberg is here. Uh, Jill is on the line. A couple of people called. We'll do this real quick. Jill in Ohio, Grand Risings. How you Jill, doing? Jill, what's popping? Jill. Hey, Grand Risings, everyone. Hello, hello, Tracy, Heather, Clay, and hey, Paul. Hey, Mama. Um, my question, Paul just kind of answered it, though, but my question for Paul was, you know, how many of these NFTs are, you know, are available, you know, and as a lot of fans, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of people wanting to get something. So it sounds like yeah. there are some exclusive items and then there are some that are not as exclusive, right? Yeah, we, we, we made an open edition with, a, you know, a sort of more attainable price so that we could 
democratize it a bit, right? So if you want one, you can get one. And um, you just have to be there at the specific time at 6.30 p.m. for the open edition. Um, beyond that, you know, it's, it's a game. You, and you, you got to, um, you know, if they sell out, hopefully they sell out. But you got to be there and you got to be early and um, just be ready to go. And, and bring your credit card, Jill. All right, you a citizen, okay? <laughs> All right, because, hey, man, listen. Hey, I've seen That's people right. sell. I've seen people in FTs go for millions of dollars, and this is m and m it makes me think about Steve Aoki and that Pokemon card. Remember that when he called? Yeah. Paid 400000 for it, and it's worth $2 million. Hey, man, do y'all? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And I, I know some folks have um, achieved a couple of million on, on some of their drops as well. And so, oh, yeah, I, plenty more. Yeah, plenty yeah. more than that. There's, there's some artists who are, you know, really highly coveted and collectible in this space that go for, you know, tons and tons of money. I don't think we're going to see anything like that here. You know, this is this is sort of an experiment. Um, you know, we'll see how things go. But, uh, you know, it's, it's an exciting space to be in, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, man. Hey, Paul, man, it's good to hear your voice. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, tell Marshall we said what up. Um, and this is Definitely. big, man. Go ahead. Definitely. I appreciate it. Um, just re- remember, everybody, niftygateway.com. Um, on Sunday, the 25th, uh, starting at 6.30 p.m. And if you want any inf- inf- more information, you can go to Eminem.com or ShadyRecords.com or check out Eminem socials or my socials. I know you guys give your socials out a lot. I'm uh, at Rosenberg. So Rosenberg on Twitter, Rosenberg on Instagram. That's where you can find me. Okay, bro. And then lastly, man, Heather and Tracy would love to have Eminem on the show. Have Marshall come on and just chop it up <laughs> with us, man. Yeah, I'm, listen, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the bug in his ear. He's overdue. He's yeah, overdue. tell him he, he's, he's, he's never, he's, he's never talked to him. They've been working here 15 years or 20 years now. <laughs> that, 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 that. He's, he's talked to you a thousand times. Yeah, he's I'm, never talked to them. Yeah, we got to make that happen. Wow. All right. Okay, um, definitely. All right, Paul. Have a great weekend. I appreciate you, brother. Niftygateway.com. Right. Sunday. Later, make Paul. sure y'all check it out. Um, Thanks, we gonna Paul. come. Thank all you, right. everybody. Peace, Peace. man. <laughs>